Hi. Hello, hello. Hello, Radek. How are you? I'm good. Very good. Uh, glad I made it. How about you, Jeremy? How are you doing? Huh? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear it's you. The, it's the same thing again. No, no, it's all good. It's fine. Oh, it's all good. No. <laughs> How are you, Jeremy? Good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, it's beautiful and sunny. Yes. Beautiful like, and sunny. I need to get it. Like outside. nearly every other day. <laughs> Apparently it's going to be 27, which is pretty good for winter, I could say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> told me. Definitely not what the experience of my first uh, 37 years of my life. Winter? Yeah, not, thir not 37. <laughs> this is sometimes closer to the uh, distance uh, from the zero on the number line on the <laughs> other side, you know. I mean, yeah. Ah, I'm having trouble getting, I'm just trying to get my screen organized and um, I'm uh, not quite used to being on a Mac. There we go. And I've also tried buying a, um, one of their magic trackpad things. So that takes some, a surprising amount of getting used to as well. Maybe it's a small, no, those are great. Things just take a little bit more adjusting to than I'm used to. What is it? It's a truck pot, right? Yeah, it's just the you know the magic track pads that they use on Apple devices. I mean, it's just it's a like track pad, but I guess I'm so used to using a, a, a thumb trackball that I my brain's like, what is this strange thing? Uh, trackpad is the mo most hated piece of equipment for me of computer technology. Like, uh, you know, uh, I remember the ThinkPads, they had this tiny little like uh, gizmo that you could uh, uh, use instead of the trackpad. I'm not yeah, sure if you, point, if you... I think they called it, yes. Yeah, that, that was wonderful. Uh, I like those. Yeah, they were great. And like, I even hate using the mouse. Uh, so so trackpad is like one level below. But yeah, I'm also in Absolutely. the in this club. Yes, uh, really after reading the uh, Rachel's post, uh, I made the jump and uh, like, I don't even think about it anymore. It's, uh, yeah. yeah it's... I had to change because my RSI was terrible. Um, that made a big difference. So I'm planning, this may be crazy, but I'm planning to like power through a lot of drifts today. Um, so that's my hope. <laughs> um, and I'll just also mention, I guess I'll share my screen. Um, oops. See, I'm already pressing the wrong button on this track there. I kind of got stuck on the encode, which is the T-shaped glyph. OK. I guess we'll hopefully get to that today then. Uh, hopefully we'll get to as many as possible. Um, all right, I'm sharing my screen. You can see it okay? Yep. Um, just wanted to briefly mention, I, I, oh, that's not good. Weird. Um, I broke everything. How about that? Your mic is not as good as the other day, Jeremy. <laughs> That's because it was way on the other side of my computer. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, is that better? Yes, everybody else is too polite to say anything. I yes, I, people being polite is the bane of my existence. <laughs> Nothing worse than being polite. I um, didn't even notice. It sounded fine to me, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that, that, that's amazing that we get along, Jeremy, then, because I'm like chronically polite. Like, uh, you know, I know uh, you're disastrously <laughs> polite, Radhika. Yeah. What to do with you? Uh, it's the bane of my existence as well, <laughs> since I remember, you know. <laughs> Manners. It is complicated. Um, why on earth do we not have a website anymore? Um, 
So GH pages. So if you're ever trying to debug a uh, broken GitHub pages, if you actually go to the Git GH pages branch, oh, there you go, it's empty. So that's why it says we don't have a website. So presumably something broke. Build website. Oh, there you go. What on earth? That's not good. All right, no worries. I will fix that later. You don't have to watch me do that. <clears throat> what I was trying to tell you is that I've broken up the notebook into four sections. Um, the bit about kind of arrays and numbers and strings, a bit about some basic functions, some basic operators and then the APL competition stuff because um, I thought it was getting a little bit unwieldy. Um, now, there is some helpful stuff about glyphs to cover on the forums, which I think, yeah, this is probably a good place. So thank you, Roger S49 for this list. And I think some of you else, maybe Serata had one too. Um, and so some of these are pretty easy to get going with. So um, what I might do is just move this one out of the way so I don't get distracted. So some of these are pretty basic functions. So I might just add them over here. Um, Maybe does factorial count as a basic math operation? Or I wonder what do we have as basic math operators? Oops. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's kind factorial of. as well as binomial. Exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it basic. Okay. Presumably they call this something like exclamation mark or exclamation point. Um, oh, and let's run this line. Okay. Uh, help. Exclamation mark, okay. I guess it doesn't really matter if it's exactly perfect, but exclamation mark. Okay, so the Mardetic version is factorial, which probably, does anybody not know what factorial is? One thing to be aware of is that um, uh, these are always prefix operators. So don't. No. <laughs> That's going to be confusing. Um, and I guess in operators, we could then mention that factorial is probably going to be the same as times slash iota, right? So maybe we could use that here. Um, so times, oh, and we need our. APL thingy. Okay, times slash iota five. And factorial five. There we go. Look at me. I'm doing APL. All right. Um, I guess we should probably look it up in case they do weird things with negative numbers or something. Oh, here we go, negative numbers. So I guess like a factorial of a non-integer is a gamma function, is that? Yes, haha. -ha. Great. Look at me remembering math from university. I've never used that since, but I'm sure it comes up for some reason. Um, Uh, 
Um, what's the keyboard shortcut to insert the lamp, the comment, the comment character? Uh, back to comma. Colin? Uh, comma. Comma. Uh, I think you need uh, your, uh, not working, I guess. your bookmark play. Yeah, I thought it'd be enabled or on, on me, but. Why well, does it add a dot sometimes? That's weird. Sometimes when I put a couple of spaces, it seems to put a dot there. All right. Um, and don't ask me to explain gamma because I'm damned if I remember um, what it is. Maybe if there's interest at some point, we should come back to that. And I guess they're probably going to call this binomial or something. Yeah, yes. Double space on Mac is period. Oh, it's a Mac thing. Is there a way to turn that off? I suppose if uh, not sure. That's right. I'll look it up later. Thanks for letting me know who to blame. Okay. Probably worth mentioning how to define binomial. Can be defined using factorial. <clears throat> so, um, results are divided derived from the beta function. I don't remember that at all. That sounds like an interesting thing to really look up one day as well. Okay, so R is the number of selections of X things from Y things. That's basically the definition of binomial that we learn in university. Actually, high school. At least in Australia, we did it in high school. Over enthusiastic with the use of non integer versions. Um, I'd be inclined to do something like, say, iota 5 um, Oh, we haven't done iota yet. No, we have. Three, four, five. <laughs> we have done iota. Not, not at this point. Oh, at this point, the at this point. There we go. So there are five ways of selecting one thing from five things, ten ways of selecting two things from five things, and so forth. And I guess, and one way of selecting zero things. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, great. Next. Cool. Um, how about we do these other Boolean ones? They're probably going to be nice and easy to zip through as well. Okay. Um, so, Boolean ones, here we are. Let's start here, shall we? Greatest common divisor slash or is nine.
So this is going to be quite fun. Because I love the way they don't just do or. Classic generalization trick. Which is to say, well, or is just a special case of GCD, which is a very nifty insight. Um, copy. Now, something I don't know is, or haven't really thought about it, is that there's some fundamental reason why that is, or it's just a coincidence that the greatest common divisor is the same as or. Greatest common divisor. Yeah, so the greatest common divisor, Radic, of zero and zero is zero. The greatest common divisor uh, of one and zero is one. Uh, I thought those were binary numbers. I started These are also, they are. They are also binary numbers. This is also a binary truth table. So this is true. This is true. This this is this this is true both for GCD and for the OR truth table. No, 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 but but so, so the way I'm reading this, and maybe this is wrong, the result is a number that's greater or than any of the two numbers above, right? So, so how can it be the greatest common divisor? No, no, no. Of... This is this is not a number. Space means create a list in APL. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But okay. the, ah, right. So so it still operates on a single item, and Correct. it's just that I saw zeros and ones. I thought, oh wow, maybe they're treating ah, no, no. this as so a binary zero number. No, that's not happening. Or zero. Got it. Got Element it. Wise. One or zero. Ah, okay. That's that's interesting. That this is. I mean, that or can be. Uh, yeah, that that's cool. That's cool. Uh, they also have an a similar interesting point about not having a, a XOR exclusive or. Because that's. Uh, yeah, but maybe that will be in a second. Oh, so. and then you can also operate on numbers that are not binary numbers that are okay got it so, sorry yeah my, my, makes a lot of sense absolutely okay. great um so i think i that's think kind the of... uh the the header um you have uh, equal underbar slash there oh thank you Need up as well and what is this thing actually called um I think it's just oh, the greatest common divisor. Let me look it up. And I accidentally started with dyadic. Is there a monadic version of it? I think so. There isn't. No, not defined. No, wow, yeah, they've actually got a spare character they can play with. It looks like it's just called logical or, I guess. That's easy. Logical or. Yep. And uh, I guess logical and is. Is that same next? thing? That no dyadic. One? Yep. Lowest common multiple or and. Okay. And all right. So this is lowest common multiple. Oh, website is up again. Our website is up again. That's what uh, the chat says. That's weird. Uh, Wasim looks like maybe he fixed it. Oh, what a champion. OK, so yeah, so we've got multiple things here now, as you see.
Thanks, Wasim. He's meant to be on vacation in Melbourne. Why is he fixing our website? <laughs> Another kind person, <laughs> you know, polite. Could be. Or maybe he's getting in trouble with his girlfriend for doing that instead of <laughs> checking out the coffee in Melbourne. All right. And um, I'm going to guess it's eight. Nope. All right, I have to look at uh, zero, thank you. Ah, zero. Okay. I've noticed that most of the time, um, the uh, there's something pointing down. The uh, the key to the right of it is going to be pointing up. Oh, okay. that seems to go down and then up a lot of times. That's good to know. Oh. Cool. Okay. Next, squiggly versions, the not versions. Okay, makes sense. Ah, and these are now the equivalents with a tilde through them. Of course, that makes sense. And they also are the equivalent shifted versions. F9. Oh, it's not so pretty in this font. Oh, well, when we publish it, it should look pretty. Oh, this is only nor, is it? Wow, oh, come on. I thought they'd have some weird, fancy way. Okay. Truth table for nor. Oops. This one. Wow. So it's. Uh, so it's actually. An, oper an operator that does very little. Just one thing. <laughs> so, Pathetic. Uh, um, yeah, ah. it's so unusual of APL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That inspiring. <laughs> I can just imagine as Adam is watching this, he's madly searching math to prove us wrong to find generalizations of NOR so he can put it in the next ah. version. <laughs> save himself from this kind of embarrassment in the future. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's a nice talking font. Okay. You don't think NAND is going to be just as disappointing, do you? I think it is. Oh, boy. Makes me wonder why we bother. Well, the universe is just helping you get through a lot of symbols. Yeah, well, quite. There is that. <laughs> yeah, trying to do a world record here. Okay. Everybody happy with our those so far? And we've got tilde somewhere. Tilde somewhere. Anybody? Well, I'll just type it. I don't know how to type tilde. Tilde. Oh, of course, it won't be in the band, in the language bar because I don't need it in the language bar. Help, tilde. Okay, there we go. Dyadic and monadic.
come on, attic shoulder is not. Um, well, presumably there's only two things for that. Yeah, I don't know why they've got four things. Trying to make it look more fancy than it is, I guess. Okay. Uh, what happens if we do nine or negative 2.3? Doesn't like it. Well, there you go. Not a bit of a disappointment as well. I'd be inclined to have it work like Python, where anything that's not zero or an empty string is turned into one. I, I think like that, that does I have think. a uh, dyadic version, at least. Yep, don't worry, they're coming. Without or excluding. Okay. Three, one, four, one, five without five, one. Looks like it's removing the actual numbers. Makes sense. It's tough that doesn't appear on the right. Yeah, exactly. And it's doing them on whole kind of arrays which you can see in this case, remembering that a string is just an array of characters. So presumably if we did something like one, two, three, without one, two. That's interesting. Oh, I probably need to be careful of my parentheses. Hmm, interesting. How is that different? You have to enclose the one, two on the right. Make it a um, one, two here is enclosed. a scalar. Oh, I see what you're saying. This is actually not one, two at all. This is actually just a parenthesized array. Yes, yes, I see. Uh, what's the keyboard shortcut for enclose again? Z. Oh, good job, Isaac. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I don't think, well, I don't think I need that parenthesis because the space should be tightly bound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. Let's check the docs to see if there's anything. I, I don't think you need the parenthesis on the on the right either. No, I guess I don't really, do I? Yeah, and, and if that actually makes it more obvious what's going on. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so it's uh, checking for equal underbar. Makes sense. And they use hash tables. Okay, makes sense too, which is basically the same as Python. Great. Um, ah, actually, the problem with looking just at symbols is that we miss out on some. And did Serata put a list, I think, on the main topic. Yes, she did. Okay, she's got all these ones. This is going to be more complete, I think. Um, all right, I guess we're out of Booleans. So maybe we should do this one. Presumably this is something like the other shoe. Uh, 
Um, I thought we did that last time, no? Did we? I thought we did the opposite direction. We definitely did the left shoe. Yeah, we got left shoe. Oh, no right shoe. No okay. Right shoe. Now the shoe's on the other foot. <laughs> We also got up shoe and down shoe as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the keyboard shortcut? Um, so uh, it'll be X, I believe. So I'm just pasting it at the moment. Okay, help. Help. Oh, yes. ADL. You believe right, Isaac. Okay, we have quad ML1. So this is disclose or first. And dyadic is pick. Okay. All right, well, these examples are nice and straightforward. It's, oh, well, interestingly though, in the second case, it's also um, like unboxing it or whatever the word they use is, unenclosing it, is it? Why is that? I guess that's interesting. Online? Is that just how it prints them? That's how it prints characters. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what are you going to say, Isaac? I don't know if it's, I mean, is, it, is, it, is it disclosing it or is it, I mean, if you just take the one, two in parentheses, then that yeah. would not be enclosed. So, right. Okay. So, my question then is, I guess, um, remind me the enclose key. Uh, Z. Yeah, it's definitely doing that. Okay, so it's taking the first thing and unboxing it. But I guess disclosing is what they use to mean unboxing. Let's see how they describe it. It's the first item. Yeah. I guess you um, can't exact, I, I don't, I have a lot of trouble understanding enclose, to be honest. Because um, like I don't like, in J it's easier, there's a data type called a box, you know, and like you use less than to put something in a box and now you've taken that thing and now it's a different data type it's the box of that thing it seems in apo that's not quite what's happening it's still this is still an array but it contains an array they have this idea of depth instead um, and so i guess when you select something like the first element by definition you you are reducing the depth you know, because that element is, you're going into it to get it out. Um, I remember Adam said, this was brought up also, this is not an array, an array. And he said, oh, look at this epsilon down below. Right. Yeah, I found so, that confusing. Um, he said is, it packages it. It packages it, but like you never get the package, you know, it always, acts like an array, as far as I can tell. It um, makes an atomic thing. 
So it kind of feels like, you know, it's different to J. I think in J, if you select the first element of something and it's in a box, you get back a box and you have to unbox it. Whereas APL doesn't behave quite that way. Do we get how these left shoe and right shoe are the opposite of each other? I don't understand this concept of first. That doesn't yeah, match. Yeah, we do because this is, so this has depth two because mm -hmm. nclose took something which was an array and put it inside an array. So we now have an array with an array in it. So that's depth two. Mm -hmm. So here's the same thing. Here's the same thing disclosed, which has taken the first element and therefore it's got a depth one less than we used to have. And so oh. therefore it's done the, yeah, it's it's taken us back to, to this. Hmm. Um, so to put it another way, we could say like um, A is this. And then we could say this um, uh, matches, which is colon A. I should do it the other way around. A matches this. Hmm. Okay. And so oh, it's a bit of a weird one. Disclose of the of the Zelda thing is zero. An edge case. All right. So let's look at the dyadic version, shall we? Pick. It looks like it's just indexing in. Okay, so if you've got a scalar on the left, it just grabs the third thing or grabs the second thing. Mm. This goes into the second thing and then finds the first thing in the second thing. All right, mm. seems easy enough. Oh, okay. Well, those seem fine. Let's see if there's anything weird about this to know about. Okay, elements of X select from successively deeper levels. Yep. Simple scalar items may be picked by empty vector items from arbitrary depth. What does that mean? Um, okay, what's going on with these? ones where they've got two sets going on. Um, so this is, um, that was row two, column one is JKL. I'm, I'm getting so confused as to which is which. Okay, we're talking about this one at the moment. So this one here is N close. So that creates an array with an array in it, and then it concatenates one. Wait, isn't that exactly the same as just putting a space between them? Yeah. Yeah. Why are they confusing us? <laughs> okay. Um, and then, oh. That's interesting. So now they're using that as an index. Uh, 
And why are they building up G in such a weird way? Um, all right, let's, I th think we are gonna need this example because this is something I... I think with the boxing, this would be uh, made pretty clear what's going on. Yeah, okay. And not having the boxing there, I think is making it look a lot harder than, than it really should be. Really, okay. Maybe they were running out of room or something. I don't see why they don't just do this. Okay, so we've got this weird thing. So I think we index in second row, first column gives JKL4. Uh -huh. First element of JKL4 gives you JKL. Okay, so all this. Is the index. And we're sorry, what's the keyboard shortcut for uh, X, X, and we need to fix this. X. Mm. Okay, so sorry, we we go into the um, second. This has been going to the second row, first column. I believe so. Yeah. And then this is grab the first thing. Right. Yeah. From that. Um, Well, we should try that on a matrix to confirm. So, um, two rows, three columns, of iota six. Okay, so you can't grab a row from a matrix. Um, Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. So oh, and you need the left true because you want that to be an atomic thing. The index. I think so. Yeah, it's gonna give you an error yeah. probably. Um, what's the keyboard shortcut for quad? L, I think. Uh, L. Okay, so that's the second row, first column. Um, and if you want the entire row, do you say the entire second row? So to row? get a row, um well we could try doing this i guess no so i'm not sure you can we just did it with g didn't we no no we didn't no, no so the difference is um okay so it looks like you use um a plain array to um, go into an array of arrays, uh, as in this one. So this is this is an array of arrays. Um, to go into a matrix, you need a a rank one or shape one thing, I guess, such as we have here. And so here now we've got a shape one thing and then a scalar. 
So the shape one thing is going to go into the matrix to row two, column one. Mm -hmm. And this now contains two items. So this is the first item. Mm -hmm. OK. So I think it's one way to get the row is to use the up arrow and down arrow. Yeah, exactly. OK. That's weird. Um, so the items of X are simple integer scalars or vectors. OK, yeah, so when we enclose them, we're creating a vector. And the vector identifies a set of indices, one per axis at that level of nesting. OK, so that description makes sense after I know what it means. I'm not sure I could have read it to figure out what it means. But. Right. I still don't know what simple scalar items in Y may be picked by empty vector items in X. An empty vector. How do you even create an empty vector? Um, is that iota zero? No, I don't know. I might leave that one for now because it's not going to help zip through it. There's something to maybe somebody can try to figure that out. Okay, that was annoyingly <laughs> long for our hope, but such is life. Um, should we do the up tack and down tack if that's what they're called? Yes. Is that what they're called? Does anybody know? Uh, yes, that's what they're called. OK, and how do I type them? Um, and, and as in Nancy. Cool. So the, the one with the pointing upwards is B, and then it kind of goes down to up again. Oh. Uh, D? No. B. Nancy and, and Oh, Nancy and Barry. <laughs> right. So this one of those is up tech. Okay. And that's only dyadic. Decode. Okay, this should be fun. This is very confusing. The first element of X has no effect on the result. This function is only for base one. That's the okay, it evaluates a polynomial. Mm. Okay, here's a polynomial that evaluates. So we start with Y1. Okay, this is Y1 times X to the N minus one times two, the zero. So two plus four plus, oh, sorry. Uh, X to the N minus one, X. X is on the left, oh, sorry. And that's zero, I guess. Yeah, that's zero. Uh, okay, so it's one times one plus one times two plus zero plus one times eight. It's the usual formula that we use to convert binary to decimal. Yeah, I understand. I'm just trying to see how it maps to that. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. So this is a binary. This is the binary number one, one, zero, one. Because we're doing it base two. Mm. 
Okay. So then, um, what about base 10? Um, yep, makes sense. What? You're, you're telling it what is one, oh, one, zero, one in base 10. Okay, so that's one times 10 to the zero plus one times 10 to the one, blah, blah, blah. So we should be able to do three, four, one, six. And that yep. should just be that number, right? Yep. Cool. All right. Um, when you've got an array on the left. Each element of X defines the ratio between the units to the corresponding pairs. Okay, so the ratio. Okay, so the ratio of the units is 24 to 60 to start with. So presumably this is like, presumably what this is, is um, two hours, the two days, mm. 40, sorry, two Six. hours, 46 minutes and 40 mm. seconds. So that would be two hours. I've got to do parentheses. And 46 minutes. And 40 seconds. Okay. Uh, why? So I see. So we start out with forty And so this unit's considered one. And so then the next one is going to be 60 times. Okay, so here's the 60 times. The next one will be another 60 times. Hence, I should write this as 60 times 60 to be more clear. Um, yes, and... I must have pressed insert. I see. And so the 24 indeed is not doing anything. Okay. That's fun. Mm -hmm. So that's up tech. Higher rank array arguments. Whoa. Okay. Each of the vectors taken as the radix vector for each of the vectors on the first axis. First axis is the rows. Jenny, before yeah. you move on, uh, do you mind to uh, the last example or the polynomial evaluation is a that is a compass number. Do you want to put that in it as well? Oh, you're right. Sure. Um, so that's going to be um, one J one to the power of zero plus one J one to the power of one times two. Is that how it works? Yes, plus one J one to the power of three. Right. To the power of two times three. Um so one J one to the power of zero is obviously going to be one. And then uh one J one to the power of one is obviously going to be one J one. And that one's times two. 
Okay. And then we've got one J one squared, which is going to be um, one um, one J one squared. Um, which is one plus i times one plus i, which equals one plus two i plus minus one. Okay, which is indeed zero j two. Okay, let's move another of those, and then that times itself again. Um, Yes, yeah, correct. It's easier to see it in the polar coordinate. Why is that? Oh, because forty-five degrees and ninety degrees. Then. Uh, you know. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm not much of a complex numbers person. So, right. So one J one is the one comma one on the Cartesian plane. Is that what you're saying? Right. One J one angle phase is forty-five degrees. And when you do time. times, is that the same as multiplying it by an angle? Yeah. Right. Power goes, translates to multiplying by phase. And also magnitude gets uh, to that power. Okay. I Maybe you can find some link or something that explains that for dummies like me and put it in the forum or something for this lesson, because I never learned any of that when I was studying philosophy at university, I'm afraid. Uh. Um, Okay. Um, so this one is four by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here's the eight. Um, X is the thing on the left. I wish they said alpha instead of x. So each of the vectors, each of these vectors is taken as the radix vector for each of these vectors. Uh, but there's three of these rows and four of these rows. How does that work? Oh, I see. It's doing an outer product. So it's doing it's doing this with this, and that's what this is. Um, is that right? That's no, I think we still need to explain in terms of radix. I don't know what a radix vector is. It's like the base, um, like 13 in radix 2 is 1101, one, just like above. Um, so no, okay, that's I'm wrong about how these are combined. So how are these how do these work? I don't get it either. I think APL Wiki has a better explanation. Oh, great. You could, as always, but still complicated. Up, tack. Uh, search for decode. Decode. So examples, the third paragraph under examples, the third paragraph, one, two, three. Yep. Okay. So we've got these ones. 
Okay, so it's a polynomial. Okay. Okay, we've done this one. One tack. One tack is um oh okay so that's um I keep forgetting how this works. X is on the left and then we multiply it by oh that that is the sum, right? One to the power of anything is one, so it uh -huh. becomes this right? one power of anything is one. Yep. Um, so we end up with three times one plus one times one plus four times one, etc. That makes sense. It gets tricky when the left hand side is an array. Yes. Okay. So then um, doing mm -hmm. it here with a matrix is um, oh, where is this going? It's just sum the column. Yeah, but why? Like, why? what's it doing? Is it doing it to each? Like, yeah, I guess that's my question. Why? Why? Um, Oh, if the left argument is a scalar, it's converted to a vector filled with that number. Ah. Oh, so it's one, one. Vector of which size? Column uh, size? Let's find out. That one. Uh -huh. Um, okay, so it's basically aligning. So, okay, so because decode expects kind of a, a scalar on the left and a vector on the right, it's not quite true. Um, Oh, I don't know what 48 did. So um, the kind of the base case seems to be more this version. And then the one where you've got a scalar is just a kind of a shortcut okay. for it. The scalar one is good for converting to bases. Yes. Or deconverting to bases. Yes. Go to base 10. Thirty-one is useful come to for converting to days and minutes and the one that the left hand side is an array, it's not clear what the use is. Uh, the one with the left-hand side is array, I mean, is useful for, like, the kind of example they gave here, I guess. So how many seconds is two hours, 46 minutes, and 40 seconds? Right. Uh, yeah, I meant when the right-hand side is a matrix and left-hand side is an uh, array. Okay. Right, the one that... What if you do two, two, two? What would that do? Just a moment here. Um... 
Uh, there's 12 of these, yeah. Okay, so it doesn't like that. So it has to be three. Okay, and you ask about two, two, two. Uh, is that no? Oh, yeah, 23 is one plus uh, five times two to, an, to the power of two, no, to the power of one plus nine times four. Is it? No, it's not. Um, it's one to the power of zero times two plus five to the power of one. Yeah, but that's not it. It doesn't even say what it does in that case, does it? Um, the first one is ignored. And then it, oh, it uses the ratio of them. Um, so hmm. with was ratio two to two should have been similar that's to that's one. That's a ratio one. of one, so it doesn't really do anything. Hmm. All right, well, maybe we'll come back to this. Um, we're slightly lost on that one. Yeah, I was looking at this before the class also and couldn't figure it out. All right. Um, Yeah, it's something going on interesting here as well. All right. Um, I hope, I'm not expecting, but I'm hoping down pack is less confusing. Oh, and what was this called? Uh, decode. Presumably this is going to be something called encode. Yes. All right. Okay. It's going to be the opposite. Um, okay, what's going on here? Mm, that's a hard one to start with. Uh.
Okay, so this is decoding seven to a binary number. of length according to whatever's on the left. Oh, do left-hand side. So this is clearing the matching columns. Oh. So here's five, here's seven, and here's 12. That's right. Okay. So we should be able to do the same thing. Oh. Yep. Y and X must both be simple numeric arrays. It's the representation of Y in the number system defined by X. If the first element of X is zero, the value will be fully represented So you're getting the digits of the right-hand side in the basis specified by the left-hand side one by one. Oh, there you go. That's the difference. So if the first element's zero, then it's going to make this as big as it has to be to get the whole number here. If it's not zero, then it truncates it. Makes sense. Well, truncate is a very special case when the thing is 10. Not really. Um, if the thing was binary, this is a truncated is binary representation. It's the least significant digits in that representation. Right, okay. Yeah, you're getting the digits one by one in that basis. This is how you get the least significant digits. Okay. I see what you mean by truncated now. Um, okay. So your 75 in base two is pro probably column one. I don't understand column two. Uh, column two is up to. Oh, okay. So that's representation of 75 in base eight. Yeah. And the other one is hex, and then right? Hexadecimal. Except we don't have letters. Huh. So it's B4, Optal 311, Binary 11010010. It's hard to imagine that one would want to do this. I mean, it could oh. be some kind of performance like thing sometimes um, uh -huh. where you need, yeah, multiple representations at once. That hmm. uh, I don't think we need it for a quick, like one of these glyphs. Yeah. So, all right. Makes sense.
Wait, we've done these. Yeah, we've done those. And the bullions. We've done that. All right, so let's do. Up and down shoe might be easier ones to work on. Where are to... they? Up and down shoe. Oh, these ones here? Yeah. Do they make sense to go with left shoe and right shoe, Isaac? Oh, not really. It's unique intersection and union is what they are. Oh, okay. All right, let's go. So they don't group. really match um, with those. Um, duplicate. The rest of the glyphs. The uh, rest. Uh, I guess we could give it a number. Rename. Oh, five. <sighs> okay. All right, how do I write these? Uh, they're going to be C and V. And this is going to be called up shoe. Oh, uh, yeah. And what are the names of the things they do? Uh, up shoe is just um, intersection. It's just dyadic. It's only dyadic? Boring. And then, um, oh. it's called set intersection more precisely. Oh, I see. Dyadic set intersection means intersection. Yeah, weird. Um, yeah, sorry, you're saying? Okay, this one's V, right? Yep. Um, that one, uh, the monadic is unique. And the uh, dyadic is union. Monadic. Unique. Dyadic. Okay, that looks straightforward enough. That's amazing. So intersection of 22 appears here, AB appears here, FG does not appear here and vice versa. Okay, this is similar to something we saw before, right? Um, the tilde, I think, um, but it would be, you'd have to use the tilde going both directions. You'd have to use yeah. it twice, I think, to get the intersection. Yeah. Right. Can we try to do that then? Um, uh, so if we wanted the intersection of Um, 
Yeah, so this is wrong. It's not, it should be like this the answer to this should be one. So in Venn diagram, tilde is the stuff that is outside the difference. Yeah. Yeah, so it's um, it's the set minus this and minus this. Okay. Yeah, union of those two. Yes. Okay. Um. Great. Anything weird about this? It's actually matched the uh, math notations for once. Yes. All right. That's nice and simple. Okay. So the dyadic version seems pretty simple. Mm. So the monadic also looks pretty simple. And we've learned a way to do this before. Um, Using not equal. Yes, exactly. Um, re re reduce. Um, was it slash not equal? Uh, yes, that sounds right. Um, I mean, not equal is like a four or a six or something. Unique mode. Was it that one or the one with the three things? That one, right? Uh, which is back uh, tick and then okay. we index into. Index into oh, array. Yeah. Um, I think you are right, actually. It's that's the one. Um, yes. And um, I think we looked at doing this. Um, to put it another way at this, um, and then did we come up with a way to do that with a with a train. You should be able to whenever A is on both sides. Yeah. I mean, it would just. There's an ugly version of it, I think. No. Why is that wrong? I thought this means put it on both sides. That does, but uh, the the tilde in between shouldn't that be a jot? This one. Uh huh. Three. Oh, there does have to be a jot there. Yes, I think so. Not Looks familiar. Jot, but um, yes, yes. Uh, what is jot? How do you type? J. It? J. There we go. Um. 
Oh, do we need that tilde inside parentheses? I think so. Um, let's see, we apply this to the A. And then, yeah, because we have to reverse it. This actually has to go on the right hand side. Because it's here. If it's on the, sorry, if it's on the left hand side. If it's on the right hand side, we're fine, but we need the not equals to apply to the left hand side. Oh. So we have to reverse the order of slash. So yeah, interesting question as to how to do this more neatly. I'm sure there's a way. Okay, that's that. Um, okay, let's leave it there. Um, I'm gonna do an extra one tomorrow people are around um, in the hope that we can get close to polishing this off. So this is like learning Chinese, isn't it? <laughs> Glyphs. Oh, there's less to learn than Chinese. <laughs> Thankfully. They're more complicated to understand what they mean than Chinese glyphs, though. So. You would know better. All right. Thanks all. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.